So it is June 1st and I'm trying something new today. This is called a Heliothis trap and I'm using this to trap squash vine borers. So there's a few insects that can cause a lot of harm to the pumpkin plants and one of them is called a squash vine borer. I've never actually had them here until last year so I was kind of blown away when my plants started dying and not doing well. Um, but basically what the squash vine borer does is it starts as a female moth. Well, actually it starts as something else, but there's a female moth and what it does is it lays an egg near the base of the vine, a root, that's cool. Um, and then the egg hatches and then the larva, which is like a little caterpillar almost, it burrows into the vine and you can actually see like all this nasty stuff where it burrows, burrows into the vine and just destroys the plant. Um, if it does get your plant and it gets on a secondary vine, you can try and save the plant by cutting the whole vine off and having the rest of the plant fend for itself. Uh, but I didn't know about the problem until it was too late. So um, what I'm doing is I'm using this to trap them, not to necessarily keep them from the pumpkin plant, but more just to make me aware of when they are actually in my patch. And then it'll tell me when I have to start looking out for them more. So it's expected for them to start arriving in mid-June, maybe later up here in Maine. Um, and it is June 1st and it's best to get the trap out before they actually start coming. Now what you're supposed to do is set the trap over a trap crop, meaning another crop that you don't care about as much that will attract the uh, insects. And I do have a pheromone, that little thing there, that orange thing, is a pheromone to attract the squash vine borer male. Down here are my little fun pumpkins that I plant. They're like mini pumpkins and white pumpkins. As you can see, they are not very big, um, but it's the biggest thing I have that's not my giant pumpkin, so we're just gonna go with it. So we have our trap crop, we have the pheromone lure, and what they do is they fly into this. Then there's, you can see a little cone, kind of, maybe. They fly up through the cone, and then they get to this top part, and then they can't get out. Um, and the hope is that it doesn't attract beneficial insects like bees because it doesn't have like a yellow color to it. So, um, so the idea is that once I see male moths in here, then I need to keep my eye out for others around the patch that may destroy my pumpkin plant. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I was devastated last year when I saw them. So hopefully this will be a good way to manage them. So one other thing, um, this pheromone only lasts for four weeks. So that's why I started it on June 1st. So the first of the month, I replaced the pheromone. So uh, July 1st, August 1st, and September 1st, I will re be replacing that. Now you're probably wondering why the heck would you put a pheromone there and attract all the bugs to your pumpkin patch? Well, in case you haven't been to my neighborhood, uh, there's not many people with gardens or people who grow pumpkins. And this right here, when this baby fills up this whole backyard, um, I don't need no pheromone to attract a squash vine borer. And unfortunately, they're probably in my soil as we speak and in my compost pile because I didn't destroy the, the old vines like I should have. So they've been overwintering in my backyard because I am not very smart. And yeah, so a pheromone lure, it doesn't matter. They're coming anyway whether we want to or not. I still haven't cleaned up my mess, um, but the good news is I'm glad I didn't because the next few days it's gonna be in like the 40s and 50s. Um, today it's 100 degrees, so I have my two thermometers here. This one says 99 degrees and that one says 100 degrees and look how great my plant looks. It's not wilted or anything. It looks, I mean, I guess it's a little wilted, but it's not really that bad. It looks awesome. Um, I think one thing that's helping is that I have the green cover cover still on it and you can see that it's shading the plant a little bit. And that makes a huge difference. And it also helps prevent the leaves from burning. Uh, and Goose is doing good too. Um, 
a lot of times these young plants, they wilt a lot in the heat because they don't have a lot of roots to bring in water. Um, but he's doing awesome. So I am so happy. Go baby, go. The cold is coming. So we're gonna shut these greenhouses in a few days. But until then, enjoy the heat and keep growing, baby. So I was just feeding and watering goose and I moved one of my walking boards and look, you can see pumpkin roots right there and there. I know they're pumpkin roots just, I mean, cause I know what pumpkin roots look like, but they're bright white and they're, they're, yeah, they're pretty far from the crown of the plant. They're probably about three feet from the crown of the plant and they do recommend when you water your pumpkin water it at least three feet out because there's going to be roots everywhere very exciting so this is what happens when you buy a cheap greenhouse the zipper breaks i usually spend about five minutes a day trying to fix it but what usually happens is once you get to a better spot and then you go back down then it just opens up further up and then you just keep making it worse and worse. So I'm gonna uh, spend probably five minutes here trying to fix this. Um, and I should have known better because that zipper works fine. And for some reason I went on this side and now I am paying for it. So I'm sure some of you are asking, what the heck do I feed this thing? Well, I could spend about three hours telling you all the stuff I feed my pumpkin. So I figured each video I would talk about one amendment or one nutrient. And the one I'm going to tell you about today is nitrogen. Um, nitrogen is one of the macronutrients uh, that the plant needs in high quantities. The other two macronutrients are phosphorus and potassium. So many of you have probably seen fertilizers and they have these little numbers on them, 11, 52, zero. That's NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. So this fertilizer has 11% nitrogen, 52% phosphorus, and zero potassium. So nitrogen is important because that's what helps the plant get its greenery. So right now I'm not growing a pumpkin, I'm growing a salad. And I want that plant to get as big as possible because that plant is what supports the actual pumpkin when the pumpkin starts growing. And nitrogen is what I need to get that plant as big as possible. So I'm focusing a lot on nitrogen early in the season. Uh, the issue with nitrogen is that when it's cold out, the plant has a hard time taking in nitrogen. Uh, if anyone ever took biology class, you may have remembered learning about the nitrogen cycle. And there's all sorts of types of nitrogen. There's N2, which is atmospheric nitrogen. There's nitrite, nitrate, and ammonium. And in the soil, there's a bunch of soil bacteria and microorganisms, and they help convert unusable forms of nitrogen into usable forms of nitrogen for the plant. So the usable forms of nitrogen are nitrate and ammonium. So early in the season, the bacteria are still dormant because the ground is still really cold and we start our plants way earlier than most people do. So we have to supplement the soil with either nitrate or ammonium while we're waiting for the bacteria to wake up. Once it gets warmer out, which is about now, then the bacteria start kicking in and I have all this organic matter and then they can start converting that organic matter and atmospheric nitrogen and all this wonderful stuff into nitrogen that the plant can take in. So the main forms of nitrogen that I use early in the season, actually the main one is this one, which is calcium nitrate. Um, it has some calcium in it, but I don't use it really for the calcium, I use it for the nitrate. And then there's this one, which is monoammonium phosphate, and this is ammonium. So I have ammonium and nitrate. Uh, my understanding is that younger plants actually prefer ammonium, but either, either will do to give your plant some nitrogen. Now I also use this stuff called azos. And this is a nitrogen fixing bacteria. So this is an azos liquid. Uh, I actually prefer the powder, which I'll show you when I start burying vines. So these are all the forms of nitrogen I use. And then I have this nerdy little diagram that I made that shows the green thing is my greenhouse. 
And then the blue area is the area where I've broadcast calcium nitrate. Um, so I did 2.32 pounds in this patch and then 2 point, oh, the same amount in that patch. Um, and I shouldn't need any more nitrogen outside of that because the bacteria will start waking up and converting any other nitrogen that I need. Um, I'll talk about these other stuff later. Um, and I'll also talk about my soil test later. But yeah, that's nitrogen for you. One other really cool thing about nitrogen, rainwater actually contains nitrogen in the form of nitrate. And what happens is the lightning in the atmosphere, it breaks apart the bond of atmospheric nitrogen, which is N2. So there's two nitrogen molecules. The lightning breaks them apart into two separate nitrogens. Then the nitrogens bond with oxygen to form nitrate. And then the nitrate comes down in the rainwater and then your plant does well. So feed your plant rainwater and you'll get some nitrogen.